So let's drop the number after all the preliminary. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. After all the preliminary <laughs> tests, the tests with the university, pretty much you see 20 to 30 percent increase of terpenes and cannabinoids, and actually more terpenes than the cannabinoids. I mean, dude, just through that PA group that we were discussing earlier, it went from on extract, it went from nine point nine percent terps to 12 and a half percent terps. Hey there, welcome to the Jug Dealers Podcast, episode two. How we doing today? It's nice to be back in studio. Back in um, the studio, it's as nice promised. to be in the new studio. I mean, not quite the- finished yet. We know that, that anybody that saw our wrap up of uh, uh, Ready, Set, Grow realizes we haven't quite finished out, but you will see nice little additions and upgrades and things as we go along. But since we had our good friend Jair here, we didn't want to uh, miss the opportunity. Yep. So here we are. And as promised, Um, you know, a lot of the new format, not that we didn't do a little bit of this with the old show, but a lot of the format's going to be education, bringing you guys special guests, bringing you guys people who really, um, you know, kind of helped move what we do forward. And, and, um, you know, and any stories that we just happen to find interesting and just, again, we want this to be, you know, something that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, listener involved and it's a uh, more of a culture show and obviously with wonderful grow information and, and everything else. But when we get an opportunity to bring a pro in and, and do that, we sure as heck are going to take opportunity. He lives in Holland. He does not hear that. Yeah. He's not here that often. <laughs> you know. He's not here. That, although, well, you know, it really does feel like Holland outside right now, which I think Jair is very happy about because he oh, was yeah. melting in Florida. Yeah. Florida was Horrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Florida was rough on you. But, I mean, let's talk about what wasn't horrible and how you started your summer. Because we left you, we left you about, you know, June of the year. We did a nice tour around the country. We we literally, we you went from corner to corner to corner to corner. So, I mean, Le- Left, you, right, up, down, and everything you, in between. And when we left, uh, we left a lot of people with lighting, um, which, as we all know, you know, uh, once you build the race car, you got to take it on the track. You got to try it around. So we've had some instances, but in between that time, you had a big birthday, Yeah, yeah, which, which, which was really exciting. You spent a month down in Jamaica. Why don't you tell us about some of the stuff you did down there? Because you really had an amazing time. Everything that you see in Jamaica, but also I love Jamaica because it's kind of raw And right. uh, 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 you see, um, uh, uh, they they have this great cannabis culture. It was definitely one of the reasons I wanted to be there. So I took a couple of days with a camera guy and actually went around Jamaica. Awesome. And um, I wanted to see what's going on. And sure, and, of course. And so I've been to. Uh, they got dispensaries on Jamaica these days. So I've been to some of the dispensaries. Uh, took a look what's going on. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, and I, I believe this surprised you based on a previous conversation. They had some fungi in there too, right? Yeah, they they mushrooms are legal in uh, in Jamaica. They just have them in the dispensary and uh, hello. Uh, and that was great to see. They have like chocolates and mushrooms and capsules and they, they so, so, sign me up. So, so uh, I hope the, I hope I hope the U.S. will follow suit on that one. We are a little bit. Yeah, yeah. no, we we are working on that. Yeah, it on what concert you get? Right, right, right. And this that was an unplanned topic, but you know, for for another show, we can definitely talk more about you know some of the things that are going on. But I found that very interesting. You're like, yeah, went into dispensaries and there are mushrooms there too. Yeah, no, no yeah. No. Lovely. Uh, yeah, lovely. lovely. So, but uh, yeah, w- w- Cannabis in Jamaica is kind of a, 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 a historical thing. I mean, yeah, the, the, Rasta, the Rastafari are using it uh, uh, in their rituals, and it's it's like a, a, a sacrament to them. But uh, uh, a lot of people over there smoke. I I have to agree that it's hard to grow over there. There's a really high humidity. Oh and, man! And, and the heat was I, insane. I, yeah, I was there jealous. in the middle of the summer. I went to the grows. It was very clear that the plants were suffering. Uh, <laughs> that the quality of cannabis on the island is okay. They're trying. They're trying. And 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 they definitely because a lot of people took some of the knowledge from uh the US to over there and also some of the strains. But it it's definitely rough. So like all outdoor, I mean in the middle of the summer you figure you couldn't even really do greenhouse. It would just be too too 
pot, right? Or was there some like semi-covered stuff? There's or? semi-covered stuff, okay, but yeah. not real greenhouse uh, style. Okay. And uh, uh, um, yeah, plants are suffering in the in the summer. They don't do any indoor. Uh, in mm. the winter, they run <laughs> some indoor, but even that, it's minimal. You won't find it for sale. Um, the all headies, all, all headies. Uh, uh, on the average, the weed there sucks because <laughs> because. All right, he uh, finally said it. Folks. So 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 pretty much you have a lot of what we call bush wheat. Uh, sure. Uh, so the, it's brown stuff and has seeds in it, and you have to you have to smoke like at least ten grams to make something <laughs> happen. And uh, but the dispensary the, the dispensary is definitely up to quality. Um, it, it was very interesting to see that. Um, uh, I think one of the, the nicer uh, trips I took was uh, I went to one of the uh, Rastafari grows. It's it's kind of semi legal, illegal. It's kind of they're, they're gray in, area. They're, huh? It's kind of a gray area gotcha. going on. It's kind so, of like that Thailand. They just don't really bother, you know. They just just run it. it, it it's yeah, they just run it, and uh, it's <laughs> cool because they 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 grow in car tires. So pretty much they put car tires on the ground and fill them with soil and just put plants in them. And, uh, uh, it kind of, it kind of works. Uh, yeah, so it, kind, to, it kind of works. You might get a, uh, some extra heavy metals, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the way they do it, you yeah, know, yeah. and they do, they, no they've shame. been doing that for a long time and, uh, readily available, uh, uh, readily planters. available. And, uh, it, 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 it it kind of works and it was really cool to do. And it gave me, I had to climb a mountain. That's also why I have my knee brace. I was on about because, to say, yeah. tell, tell because, us what happened there. Uh, well, uh, well, my, he, my, he, he turned 50 and he thought he was 30. Yeah. That's kind of what yeah. happened. So, yeah. so my, 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 I'm like, I'm going to climb that mountain. I want to see that grow. And, my my head was like I can do this, and my knee was like no, you can't. And hey so- man, hey like <laughs> like I like I said to you in New York this summer though. God bless you for getting out there. And yeah, trying. you went for it, bud. So I see some interesting things. They got a lot of the American strains. I seen that, that that's kind of because the hype kind of got over to Jamaica also, but they also still have the things that are locally like their lamb's breath and things like uh, the, the 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 purple kush and things that are really for the island. And I thought that was really interesting. To to see. Um, um, and after that, I, uh, because that was a Rastafari grow, they actually took me to a place that was a little bit more down on the mountain and we had a steam cello ceremony. Mm. Why don't and, you tell, yeah, tell, tell us, us about, about that. that? Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah. So, so that's the way that the Rastafari actually smoke cannabis. It, it, it's pretty much a coconut that's made into uh, uh, um, a water pipe, a bong, and only the, the hat is uh, a ceramic and it's pretty big and you they put like four or five grams of wheat in there. All right. And then Pack they put up. like Pack this little up. ceramic plate on top. And they actually put like burning coconut uh, coals, uh, coals. coals on top. Okay. And actually it's a, it's a way of vaporizing. That's what I say. So that they're not burning it. They're vaporizing. They're it. actually vaporizing it. And that's interesting. interesting. So, I, so, so, I, so, so, so traditionally seen it's, it, it they never smoke it. They vaporize it. Well, and interestingly enough, that, I don't know. Maybe it's just the terminology steam chalice. That always kind of threw me off a little bit. It threw me off also. I felt when he says, when he said like, oh, we're going to smoke a steam chalice. And I'm, like, about, where's and I'm like, where's the, where's the steam at? But the steam is kind of what you're. It's the vapor. It's, it's really, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a water filtered vaporizer. Yes. Interesting. And Interesting. that was, and that was really nice. It was really smooth, uh, smooth and it was good and uh, uh, super low tech. If you see all the vaporizers <laughs> these days, I, oh, really, man. I really enjoy nah, that. It's not your, it's not your peak. Right. But uh, again, just because it's low tech doesn't mean it's not effective. No, it was definitely not effective. Actually, that's a really good way of doing it. Hey, sign me up. I'm into it. It sounds great. Again, I was always throwing up. I, I don't know. I guess what I was thinking, really. Right. But, yeah. I, I'll be honest with you. I hadn't even heard of it before. And I feel like, yeah, I, that's just my own ignorance. It's like, it's give me a while. coconut, you know? Let's go. Yeah, we're out here doing hot knives and that right. stuff. You know well, what I mean? Speaking of hot knives, um, actually, we, <laughs> geez, we're kind of good at this. Um, <laughs> we... we <clears throat> We were able to procure some very interesting, uh, and I'd like you to chat about that a little bit, Jay, just because it's something that's very rare here in the U.S., but some, some you know, some Afghani extract that is in the old way and yeah, it's very produced high in the old way. So, so pretty much yesterday I met somebody who really wanted to talk to me and says, I got something really special for you. And he comes and he brings true legacy Afghani Primo. And it's a, uh, it's a, uh, well, 
I got quite dark in color, it's but very dark fragrant, color, very, very tacky, fragrant. very pliable. Explain, pliable. Explain to us how it's like different than the Charis. Because when I first saw it, I, I thought it was done in the Charis method. Well, Charis is hand rubbed. So yep, yep, they, yep. If, you, if you go to India, they people they hand they, they rub their hands on the plants, yep, yep. and then and then you get something that's that's more a, a life product. Mm-hmm. Because and it's, it's also done at a very specific time, from what I understand, actually quite early, almost like they do with some of the live mm-hmm. resin now. How yep, they go yep. in that like four. Or five, six weeks kind of stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so that, that is, that is Charles. This is, uh, uh, Afghani is made in a different way. Aged uh, properly uh, and uh, for long term. Yes. And, and, and pretty much they, they, they take the glands and then they uh, use this, this, this heat treatment sure. that is also already decarbing the product. Right. Of course, activating it. Uh, activating it. They make sure that all the glands are broken down and then they start folding it over to each other or rolling it out. And they busting up those heads, getting those oils all out there and active and smushed around. And, oh, yeah, and that then, sounds and, lovely. And, and, uh, originally Sexy. in Afghanistan, mm-hmm, after mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. they actually put it in linen bags and they bury it for a while. So of course that, that, didn't happen in this case because this is actually made locally right here in the US locally made but in the old way in the old way and and pretty much this one that we have here is uh, aged for 2 years mm. and the nice thing and this is different than all the other concentrates that are out there this actually gets better over time Right. And you yeah. do have this activation. You do have, because of course there's half-lives and different cannabinoids and things like that. And there is chemical transformations, not only just decarboxylization, but some of the things that happen over time that do, you know, and it, whether you think it's better or not, it's definitely different because yeah, with time, different. different things happen. No, no yes, doubt. But yeah. you, you see that with wine. Absolutely. And you see that with whiskey yep. and yeah, a absolutely. lot of things. This is, are, not, this is not an uh, uncommon yeah, thought no, 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 man, if it, just, Each process is going to pull different constituents. It's right. just that yes. simple. Yes. Right. Know? Right, right, right. Yes, but it, 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 this market went all the way to like we want to our concentrates to taste exactly like the plant, and this is the the other side of the spectrum. I mean, this this has not a lot to do. It's saying with, we took it from the plant, but then we made it something new. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it I mean, is an interesting pretty way to much think it's, about it's, it. it's it's the difference of drinking grape juice or drinking like this ten year old aged wine. Well, it's funny because when you busted this out, you know, I was like. I haven't seen stuff like that in 25, 30 years. And then as soon as I hit it, I was like, yep, 19, 1994 called. Yeah. I say, <laughs> dead tour 94 Chicago. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. That actually is the exact show. We actually, well, nothing, nothing better than no, no, there's nothing better in life that things that trigger happy memories. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so well, it's yeah. nostalgia and the nostalgia effect, yeah. no doubt. But I will say it was very complex. If you look at it and go, well, this is dark in color and things like that. Yeah. It's got oxidation. It's got time. It's like, it is aged. It's supposed to look like that. And, 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 and I'll be honest, the, the flavor was very complex, but even more so, the effect was very. Uh, uh, it's different. It's different. It's, it was fuzzy. It's heavy, dude. It was dude. fuzzy and it was heavy. It, you know, yeah. but like you get that, it was like that head, fuzzy, heavy, fuzzy vision kind of stuff going on. It was definitely yeah. like, this is a different. This is hitting me different because you got two year old age, you know, half life and, and changed and altered and whatever, you know, cannabis extract. So yeah, we had of very course we, in the last couple of years we had Frenchy Cannoli, right? That 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 actually tried to teach these these new bad me- or not. Actually, these legacy old methods, methods these old, old methods, methods to the new world, yeah, yeah to the new world, and, and uh, uh, I, I, I personally really like those things. And All actually, right, where you, where you, where you start putting it out there, uh, you, you notice that a lot of people like that. So I think that uh, the market, it, 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 we need a revival. Well, right, and well, because you really don't see this. I mean, it is. We talk a lot about live resin. We talk a lot about rosin. We talk a lot about these modern techniques, which are great. And I, you know, the, the city of Denver has really helped pioneer a lot of that, you know, whether it's peer pressure and some of their tech and all this stuff's going on. It's wonderful. Or, or Nick and all the stuff that he's been doing and everything else. But, but so I'll tell you what, um, you know, and I was saying this to Jay earlier, and this is funny because it almost will, it, it almost segues into the next segment a little bit, Oh, but, Rawr. but, um, you know, I had, I had said to Jay or, um, I had some friends out in California. They did that summer light dep and that, harvest that they did from May to July Mm -hmm. would always put out just, they would grow OGs and it would put out the greasiest, greasiest herb in which they would make these. If you, anybody who's listening to this podcast that knows grass Valley knows exactly what I'm talking about. And they would Mm -hmm. make these one ounce pucks of 
of, you know, uh, you know, product that was exactly like, that was very similar Old to world that. Old extract style. <clears throat> yeah. And so one thing that we've kind of started seeing is, you know, if you think about that time of the year, you know, I always say to folks, uh, one thing that was always really cool about that time of the year is 7 a.m. They pull the cover. It's sure. full sun. Yeah. 7 a.m. The 7 p.m. They pull the cover. It's full sun. Well, especially well, that time of the year, yeah, the sun's yep. dead high. And so e what over the solstice? Yeah, so yep. what have we been pushing with Yair this whole year around the country? The UV light. Yes. You know, and that's really that's that simulation of that Grass Valley. Yeah. Middle of summer. High full, intensity. High intense. And what you know, if we can just talk about it right now. Now that he's back. Now that it's been four, five, six months that we've actually had the product out, what's the one thing that we're seeing that's really consistent out of the results? We're seeing elevated levels in oils, which is, this well, is the stuff we've been talking about. Well, and this is the stuff we'd expect. By the way, this is not something that we did not expect. We expected that to happen. This is UV. It's going to create that kind of positive stress. It's going to get the plant to put out its own natural sunscreen. That's what it's really doing, right? So it's not doing anything that we didn't think it was going to do. And we knew that sunscreen, by the way, is literally what we're after. So um, what this is only doing is just affirming Yes. The things that we, that we already fought, they were already do enough. Right. Actually we did preliminary, preliminary tests, but putting it in the hands of growers and actually see what their results are. And getting the anecdotal elements as well, right? Yes, because we are trying to get all kinds of different evidence. We're trying to get evidence direct from growers. We're trying to get white paper evidence. We're trying to get testing results. We're working on all this, which we're actively doing. And um, as we get this stuff, we will continue to share it with so you because it's very exciting. Yeah. So before I, I was here before the podcast that I remember saying it's got to be more. But I didn't really pull any numbers because we were not totally sure. So we did a lot of testing also with the uh, University of Wageningen and the Ver. We actually did a test. And uh, and well, explain who they are real quick, just so, for the people so the that don't, Wageningen, that, if you don't mind. The Wageningen University in Holland is the biggest horticultural university in the world. Oh, okay. Uh, they, so they're not just this like, uh, you know, uh, weekend college not, kind of place. Not <laughs> no, no, no. It's not Hollywood upstairs horticultural they have, college. They have, they have huge <laughs> greenhouses and they have huge uh, uh, grow cells and, and, and uh, climate cells to do all kinds of testing and, and uh, uh, they got like these great machines to see how the, 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 the photosynthesis of the plant is going and they got all kinds of beautiful equipment that me as a grower Kind oh of, man, this is the uh, stuff yeah, that really excites us. Yeah, no, I, 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 they, they, they show me this machine, and I'm like, I want one, and they're like, yeah, it's half, a, it's half a million. I'm I mean, like, you can uh, have uh, it, but it's, it's a half a million yeah, dollars. Yeah, so, so that was kind Euros of euros, probably too. So yes, it's gonna be more expensive. So that was that was expensive, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's really interesting to have a bunch of scientists actually look at it because they do things differently. So we, uh, they also were, were at, at this moment. I don't have all the results yet because the test just ended. Right. I know some preliminary results results that I can already share. But also instead of just looking at how, how the how the oil production was, we also tried to figure out a couple of other things, like is uh UV systemic. Which for me made I feel like we knew things like terpenes, cannabinoids, things were going to be higher because we think about it from an evolutionary standpoint by adding that part of the spectrum. That did not surprise us at all. No. What is helping validify what we've got going on and even the fact that we're using 150 watts per 4,000 watts, all you need to do preliminarily, it looks like all you need to do is tickle these things with a little UV. And even if it only hits one side of the plant, it is systemically altering the other side of the plant as well. And if we can actually get those white papers yeah. on that, well, we, we, I'm very we, excited. We tested one side of the plant that was actually in the light of the UV right. to the other side of the plant. And I'm not sure, but uh, at this moment, it looks like it's systemic, but uh, they're still doing a lot of calculations. And, and, and now, and now let's be clear, you know, saying that there's some systemic value doesn't necessarily mean that the side that got hit with it is go and the side that didn't is going to be the exact same values. But let's say it would be here and it's brought up a little bit here, but the side got hit yes, with it true. might still be higher, right? Yes, These are things, and that's the shit that we're working through right now is really trying to figure out what are the differences and, you know, and something like that. But again, what it does is it validifies the fact that we're setting these up as true light additives 
and, 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 and it has nothing to do with an addition of intensity. It's a true light additive, just like a nutrients. You've got base nutrients. So your base nutrients is either the LEDs, the HPS, whatever you're running. And this is a light additive that's actually brought in to help push those type. Again, it works right in line with what we're doing in new millennium and everything else, which is genetic potential and phenotypic expression. It's literally working hand in hand with so, that. So let's drop the number after all the preliminary. <laughs> dun, 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 uh, dun, dun, dun. After all the preliminary <laughs> tests and the things and the liver. <laughs> <laughs> test and the test with the university, pretty much you see a uh, 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 20 to 30 percent increase of terpenes and cannabinoids, and actually more terpenes than the cannabinoids. But which uh, excites me more. Yeah, I mean, dude, just through that PA group that we were discussing earlier, just on the garlic cookies, it went from on extract, it went from nine point nine uh, percent terps to twelve and a half percent terps. And that's on huge. That's, and that that's, was that, that's, that's a more big, than 30%. Yeah, that's a that's and a big, these are, that's a big these number. are these are numbers based against historic numbers. Let us be clear about that. When you say historic numbers, this is numbers long they have a long a lot of data on. Right. So I mean, and consistently across the board, right. We saw increase in terpene production on everything that was tested that was that was grown under a U uh, under the UV. Right. Along with HPS fixtures. Right. You know, so it wasn't, you know, it was still that old school technology. Uh, let me, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, maybe if you could explain to the people out there, what, what really does make the, the design that you guys have so much different and so much better than led diodes? Well, uh, yeah, well, we test with LED diets and, 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 and the and thing is, and we, of course we test with everything. We're a lighting company. And uh, uh, the thing with LED diodes, they have a very narrow width. The, yeah, the, bandwidth. The, so it might be some UVAB, but it's not all UVB, yeah, just so, as an so example. It's just a little bit. A little bit of UVB. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, 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 it does make a difference on the plants. And mean, it's enough it, in there that we can say that it's in there, or people can say that yeah, it's in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, it, it works, but it's more like a sprinkle. Uh, on the moment, we're using our UV light, what is actually old-school lab technology, what is like full-spectrum UVA and a UVB, a little bit of UVC, and it actually goes all the way to far red, and you get everything, everything that the sun gives. Well, and that's, okay, so you mentioned the sun, so I like to say this, right? A light-emitting diode, by definition, is, is uh, you know, it's light and electricity being th pushed through plastic to get what you want, right? Yes. Whereas a UV bulb, it's a small double end, it kind of actually looks like a, 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 almost like a 315 double ended kind of the weird ones they had, but long story short, it's a burning ball of gas. What is the sun? Gabe, what's the sun? Oh, it is a burning ball, of burning gas. ball of gas. So to me that, that, that helps people get their mind wrapped around that. Like yep. that's what you have to have that reaction. You have to have those heat levels <laughs> in those lamps to actually be able to create the, the type of spectrum that we want. And what we're trying to do is take the part that's already there that we know is already in the room and add to it again. Hence this and UV. For everybody additive. who didn't follow the last uh, podcast, it's the UV light is not a very powerful light. It's only, only 150, only 150, yeah, only 150 watts. It doesn't put out a lot of heat. And you only need one for every, Every four top lights. So you do it like a hundred square feet. Which is whole systemic aspect of it. That's what's so exciting. You're using only one and a half watts per square feet per unit. These units are going out the door, you know, to end users, 550, 600, somewhere right in there. So you look at that as an additive that you split that around off of 4,000 watts and you get these kind of numbers increase. Dare I say, dare I say, and I believe I mentioned this last time, we're looking to reset the bar. Yeah, this is. You reset this, the bar uh, once. It, 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 I did it once, and I truly I came back to the market because I believe that this is another one. This is uh, if you're not testing this technology right now, and you're not going to jump on it, you you're going to be behind. you're going to yep. be left behind. And we've seen that with the introduction of the DE lamp. That if people didn't jump on there, they got left behind. And I can tell you it, that it established new numbers. It well, just did. Yeah, and if you look at it, that every everybody gets their laboratory tests these days. Yeah, thirty percent, twenty to thirty percent more. That's a Huge difference. It's a huge number. It's a huge, a huge number. number. And also, if you look at the money well, wise, yeah, if you, you make you, you make extract, it's a giant. It, it's a giant number. I mean, in, in <clears throat> commercial agriculture, let's be let's be clear. If I went into a commercial operation, uh, a tomato operation or something, I could promise them one percent. Every PhD at the table would fall out of their chair. Yes. <laughs> well, and I and I and I'll be honest with you. I think moving forward, <clears throat> you know, you have these states like Maryland where it's a THC game. 
you know, when you start getting into some of these markets where all of a sudden you're going to be I'm able to make a terpene yeah. game and you're going to be like, hey, not for nothing. Uh, these other five places that also have garlic cookies, right. uh, their terps are only 4%. Our terps are 6%. You I know want I mean? 6%. In which that's quantifiable data that you can show to someone and be like, this is louder. And as and as we've been saying, as we get this information, as we get the white paper stuff, I know we're tickling and teasing and throwing a lot of different stuff out there. But rest assured, uh, as we get these definitive <laughs> answers and as we have people that are willing to do testimonials, you know how that can be a little bit, you know. Um, when people are testing something new and they really believe they have something new, they're not always willing to. <laughs> no, it's, 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 for a lot of growers, it's also their secret sauce. Right, it's right, right. Advantage. Hey, we saw that with we saw that with Winter Frost. The, you know, that became the big secret, right? Yeah, and yep. it's kind of like I feel it's kind of like happening with the UV right now. People, kind but of hey, we're we're here not talking about it. We're here to present that information when we get it, anywhere we can get it, good, definitive, um, real data we're going to sit here we're going to present oh, yeah. it no, yeah. no. i mean by the end of the year we're going to have the white papers and pretty much that's that's scientific proof that it will do what it does and we already know the preliminary results of that so i'm already smiling because this is going to set the bar in a new in a totally new level on i mean more flavor right wow. right 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 and 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 then there's so much more testing we could do i mean uh we can look at it does what does it do for the different kind of terpenes and maybe well here's the thing and i said this for a while and we've talked about this a lot too because there is going to be some strain specificity that we see certain environments or certain genetics that were raised in high uv environments we are absolutely going to see more effect there than we would be from more of an equatorial plant we know we expect those kind of differences and we know we're going to see some strain specificity so oh, it's very strain specific well, and 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 here's the interesting thing and it's not so specific that we even have the beta testing to even tell you by the way other than some of these generalities but what i will say we've we're open, every question that we answer we get 10 more this is a pandora's box we're opening in a wonderful way so i would encourage anybody that's out there interested we've got the baseline ways that we're using it but we're not saying that that's uh, no, the only no, no, way no. to so, use so it at this moment we're telling people to run them four hours a day but i have to also be honest i have a, we have a customer we already have said, people that are trust me running it much more yeah. yeah running it much more and and i kind of uh uh dare to give a dare to growers to kind of play with the technology and see what Somebody's it does Somebody's always going to go in and they're always looking for the hack they're always doing that and and, and we'll and that's that's just how this game works right you give people this is how baseline how you use it and now they go and want to say what else can it do and actually i've already seen some results that say that uh, our safe baseline might be really safe. And uh, well, I, I think I, for, and, and, and I think part of that's from a workflow and I don't want to get too much into that, but I think part of that's from a workflow aspect too. You got to have people work under lights, mm -hmm. things like that. You can't be working under it. So our four hour thing we know is going to get the results we want. Could you be running it longer if you didn't have people working on it? Sure. But again, we know we, we we're yeah, going to, let's explain. You yeah. can't be for extended time in the grow room when you have the UV light. No, you cannot. It, it contains uh, tiny bits of UVC, what's actually great against things like powdery mildew, bugs and stuff like that. But also the problem is it's not very good for your skin. Right. Also not very good for your eyes. Right. So, so we tell people that if you, you can't look in the light, light, you'd really need shades if you do that. Totally. But also just flip the light off when you go into the room. Right, and right. But also uh, the UVC, like I said, less problems with powdery mildew, less problems bugs, with bugs, snaps, all that. But yeah. also faster breakdown of residuals when you when people spray it, actually it breaks yep, down the yep. residuals faster. Again, and these are the things that we're not even putting in our literature right now. We just knew these are things that UV does, yes. and so we know that we're well, going to get now, these kind of results. And, yeah. and now we've talked to people about right. the results, in which I'll be honest with you, these weren't claims I was making or anything. But now I've I've had people come to me and be like, hey. Uh, this issue is not there anymore. This issue is way wow. less. Yeah, we know, were, so. the, I think one of the funnier ones I had was Gnat. So I said, a moment I have this grower who comes to me, he's like, you hear, I always have a Gnat problem and I put the UV lights on and the Gnats are gone. And I don't get it. And I'm like, I don't get it either. So, so that, that well, so, this well, isn't a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing. And then I actually went to another grower and I'm like, that's funny. I had just had somebody who <laughs> said he didn't see his Gnats. And he's like, now you say it. I didn't. I see don't it. either. I, I don't either. So, so there are a lot of things that we just don't know yet. So, um, you know, kind of as a great segue to that, and some of the things that people are doing differently and taking the technology, and uh, you know, really helping us out 
seeing some of the results of even mixing the 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 spectrums that we have out there between the apex our double ended and uh, and the uv uh shout out to ideal cannabis town in florida jair and i just got done spending some time with the boys down there they're doing a great job working under the gold leaf uh brand and uh yeah they have some obviously they've got you know great double ended rooms those guys are some of the classic double enders yeah for they you. got some classic rooms but they're also testing with all kinds of lighting actually yes uh they have a whole row of rooms where they test different brands and they test different configurations yep, yep. and uh one of the the ones that we built for them is actually something they really like they actually do a double-ended uh 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 hps room together mixed with checkerboarded pretty much with uh with, with the uh, apex with which the, is our top light led yeah yep. with top light <clears throat> led and that, that they they really swear by that combination so uh like i said uh, some people go led some people go hps some people go some people mix uh, it, mix and, it. And, so so and, and and i'm totally for any one of those well we love seeing it really quite frankly and, and and you know what's interesting too is some of the best rooms we saw they had originally were one of your first it's kind of well i would even venture to say it's kind of well it would be the apex version one which is a 1930 from gavita right so that was something that was always thought as being a one-to-one switch out with DEs, and it was one of your original concepts before you left and the problem was it just wasn't the same micromole output as a DE. No, but the, to do to, to a, a true one-to-one swap, you also have to do, if you do a checkerboard, every light needs to have the same output. It's got to be, because it, it has to be at the same spot. If you're really talking about flipping them out and doing it, yeah, exactly. Especially with a checkerboard, Stecker, right? Checkerboard. So otherwise, optics have to work correctly, all yes, that. Everything has to work correctly to get the uniformity on crop. Otherwise, parts will be uh, harvested, ready to harvest sooner than other parts. And that's not what you want. You want to create uniformity. Right. So you want to harvest, everything is ready at the same moment you can harvest everything at the race same moment yeah so, yep. so yep. It, it, like i said at this moment the, the technology is for everybody's over the board because there's so many new lighting technology out right there. and uh, uh i advise people to test it and to play with it and uh, definitely with uh crazy new technologies like we put like the uv we're putting out i mean it's not an expensive test you buy one it's like 550 bucks and get get one of those units see the in. results i mean we are i mean seeing is believing like and i think this <clears throat> this industry is probably one of the the, the biggest doubters, you know, around oh, or yeah, in this industry, no, no, you know what I mean? And everybody's really into their way. You know what I mean? We had a meeting, you know, down in Florida where this guy, you know, 30 year grower in the same fucking way. There was no way we couldn't pay him to do something different. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day you go, okay, that's fine. You know, but new technology is for people that really want to push the envelope and want to do something different. Again, if you're using technology, you have the ability to create the data points to create new data points, new bars, new levels. And again, I really believe that's the kind of stuff that we are on the brink of here of just establishing, well, it used to be 5%. Now it's seven. I mean, can you imagine if, if, if we were able to come out and really say, look, this is the game changer. Well, I mean, well, let's, let's just cut to the chase, dude. We're trying to simulate the sun inside. Right. Yes. Let's just, let's just, let's just really simplify it. We're trying and, to. So meaning, meaning what was the main thing we were always missing? Yes. UV, well, that's what's, uh, that, and who, and to be honest with you, who knows what else we're missing? Well, I mean, I think there is other you know, things think, there, but I, I think, think this is step just, one. We're just at the tip of the iceberg right now because we're realizing that, hey, UV is something that's important. But again, the sun is a it's a pretty you she's know, a complex beast. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, it powers our whole it, it powers our whole planet. So well, there's a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it's a whole show to get into whenever that, but. whenever, <laughs> you know, whenever you bring it inside, you're trying to bring in the best parts of nature. Right. But much like we say about beneficial bacteria, silica, you know, sure, it's not an essential element. Does it does that mean that it doesn't have any benefit? Of course it has benefit. Of course it has benefit. You know, so and, and, you know, to say, just to, to segue on what you're saying, you know, plants uh, evolved right along with these single cell organisms like bacteria, fungi, protozoa, all those kind of things. Well, it also evolved right along with the sun yep. because that's its life source. They're yes. an autotroph. We're heterotrophs. They create their own food. We have to seek our own food. And where do we seek our own food? Either directly from plants or from animals that are inevitably somewhere along the line eating a plant. True. So no plants no people so yeah um um and on that part i want to oh, say oh. if you if you got a a nice licensed grow and you really want to 
test something out to like, like reach out to five, eight. Yeah. And, and take a look on Jair's page too. I, I did want to mention that because I know you put up some good picks from the, from the trip too. And some of the, some of the mixed rooms and things like that, that really is very unique, very different. I come to my Facebook, yeah. uh, Jair Feliman. <clears throat> and uh, there you go. I, I, I always show a little bit what I'm seeing in, in, in this country and when I'm traveling around and some of those things are interesting. And, and you will be able to see a lot of these things. Uh, we're in the process of getting jug dealers, podcast.com going. So you'll be able to actually uh, link through there to all the things that are everything 5.8, which 5.8, of course, is not only powered by quality, but sponsored by things like New Millennium, Dutch Lighting Innovations, our friend Jair here, Silicium Cytetics, Ruck Air Movement Playground, and of course, and certainly not least, Black Flies Eyewear. Black Man, Flies Eyewear. Almost, dude, it is almost <laughs> like we've done this, this before. Uh, what a great way to leave the show. You know, we're really happy you came through while Thanks you were here. By. We don't get to, we, you guys. we only get to see you in Denver a couple times a year. You're touring around the rest of the country for the rest of the year. Uh, for anybody out there who needs anything, please feel free to meet you, reach out to me at G Money Love. Reach out to Jaron at Jaron H at Instagram, yep, or yep. you can ask for Jair, DLI. Five, uh, any of you, you'll, any you'll any find of us. Them. And, you know, last, but I, I feel like we're almost a little remiss by not mentioning this. We do have reservations. Uh, uh, shout out to Bruto uh, in <laughs> Denver for getting their Michelin, Michelin star. star. Yes. Yeah. They yeah, got the, this I, is it, it's good for us because we had made the reservation before pre previous to that. But I, I I will be honest to say that I definitely was calling that we needed to make the reservation. You did. You said that. You actually said that. You actually said that. They're going to get that. the Michelin star once they, they their, do. They got their star two days ago. Two days yeah, ago, two they days got their star ago. on September twelfth. Oh, well, and I guess we're giving away when we actually recorded this movie cares. Uh, so we're going tonight. It is Jair's favorite place in Denver, but also one of his favorite places in the U S and believe it or not, this man has been around the world and has eaten some wild shit. Yeah. So for him to say something like that it's, is it's, that means you go. It's, it's mind blowing. So yeah, definitely. If you're in Denver or area that Bruto is B R U T O yeah. Bruto. It's definitely the place to go. <laughs> hey, thank you guys very Thanks, much. Guys. We love you as always. Peace. See you soon. Cheers.